this is what I used to say. It takes the heart of a lion, the spirit of a warrior, and the mind of a traitor. And I know Nanette has all three of those qualities. So Nanette, I'm passing over uh, the controls to you. So I should be able to hear your voice in a minute or so, and then you could share your screen. And anytime you're ready, we could get this interview going. I know it's still a couple minutes early, but what the heck. Hey, Dale, I'm here. Oh, Nanette, it is so great to see you. And you know what? It would be even greater to see you if you just put on your webcam for just a second so people don't think I'm insane. The, you know, because I've talked about, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has said that you look like Vin Diesel, only handsomer. So, you know, if you could go ahead, <laughs> if you want to show your mug, that's fine. If not, yes, of course. All right, here he comes. All right. Now. All yeah, right. I'm okay. here. You see, I right. don't look quite like a wind diesel when I put my <laughs> headset here. You see now, it's not quite like that. But when I turn it down and when I remove it, okay, now it's it's yeah. more, right? Come on. Let's see, Forex Gal, don't you guys agree with me that he has a, he, he has a common appearance to Vin Diesel? Anyway, Maybe. great to... Great to have you with us, Warrior, my trading warrior brother, Nanette. I haven't talked to you in a year or so, so this is like a reunion for us. So uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. Nanette's with Admiral. He's with, uh, what's it called, Elite Currencies with Chris. Yes. And you're, you're a real busy guy. You're a star on FX Street. And so thank you for taking time to uh, show your face on face. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Dale. Thanks a lot. I really, it's been an honor to speak to you, and I'm always happy when I schedule webinars and interviews with you, because I know that you're a genuine guy, a genuine trader, and I'm really, I need to say, sick and tired of those people who are just hiding behind their screens, and they're actually doing nothing for the community, just living by, by their, uh, I don't know, old glory, if I can say but I'm th that I know that you actually trade, you have your live trading rooms, and we both know how it's, it's very hard to actually trade in front of the audience. Yeah, so, and you know what, I, when I was first, when I first came into the business, Nanad, you were probably weren't born yet, okay? But, yeah, uh, but a veteran trader pulled me aside, and he said, kid, this is a tough way to make an easy buck. And he was definitely, <laughs> He was definitely correct on that. So, um, you know, why don't I just start with a little bit of background uh, yeah. for our community. How did you end up being an FX trader and get in the business, Nanette? Well, the first of all, before I got into this business, I actually worked for an outsourced agency for BNP Paribas Funds. So mm -hmm. we actually had an offer from uh, the agency who worked with uh, BNP Paribas Bank to offer them, uh, well, to actually, we, we wanted to offer people to sign up for different contracts uh, regarding different hedge funds. And then I saw that uh, basically in those... Uh, let's say statements, uh, I saw that there was like 30, 35, 34 percent of wins or uh, uh, ROI during a single year. And I was wondering if a bank trader could earn like 30, 35 percent ROI uh, in a single year, uh, is it possible that I myself can earn maybe a little bit more by trading myself, not hedge fund, but my own account? And then yeah. I actually uh, started to look for uh, different brokers. I'm an economist, so I knew what Forex was, but uh, basically I didn't know how to trade. And then I decided to actually uh, uh, give up that kind of work, and I wanted to actually trade myself. And I delve into Forex market, I start reading a lot, I start working a lot, I still have some day job that was in an office, but every time my boss 
uh, kicks in, I actually press my Windows button and I hide my screen from him. So basically, I was, yeah, I, I'm very honest. And basically, I was cheating at my day job because I wanted to trade. I wanted to be someone in, in this market because I knew I, I could succeed. And then I was watching 24-7, literally 24-7. When I yeah. got back home, I watched the charts. On my day job, I watched charts. My boss kicks in. I just press Windows button. And I almost got fired because he caught me because I was so into charts and I was so into trading on my day job. And he actually came in and he said, "Okay, Nana, what are you doing now? Are you not doing your your job?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm just watching stock market." But I was watching forex, but he didn't know difference yeah. between forex and stock market. So I just said I was watching stock market. And then he said, "Okay, uh, I will talk to your manager." He called manager and he said, "Okay, your employee is watching uh, the market. He is not working what he should." And I said, "Okay, I I did my work. Here is this is my work. Now yeah. just." Please let me finish this. It's only 10 minutes. And he was so pissed off, but you know, yeah. it actually paid off. I actually, uh, I quit my uh, day job maybe after a year of uh, demo trading and live trading on smaller accounts. And now you don't have to hide your screen from anybody. Are no. you married? No, not at all. <laughs> Are you I married? Want, uh, I was, sorry, Dale, I didn't hear you. Are you married? Yes, I am. Right, you don't have to hide. You don't have to hide your screen from your wife, do you? Yeah, of course. I don't. I mean, <laughs> my wife is is ten years younger. She's also very beautiful, and she's also my uh, lover and my friend. So she knows what I'm doing. So it's of course. <laughs> so it's of course always good to have a wife that is very very friendly. Yeah, she's not a typical. You know, you really wife. need a special woman that's going to be supportive of. Yeah, her husband being a speculator. I know ah, that. Yeah, true so, that. She knows yeah. that I'm popular. She knows that a lot of, well, actually, girls like to take some pictures with me, so she doesn't <laughs> mind. So she's normal. <laughs> All right, buddy. So, you know, last week the French elections, and we're looking at your euro chart, and mm -hmm. the big question everyone is asking is, is that gap going to be filled? And okay. No, and, uh, you know, I, they, people ask me, well, I go, well, if it's a breakaway gap, you know, people are under the misconception mm -hmm. that every gap is filled, okay? <laughs> and, 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 you know, it could take a year and a lot of magnitude of price movement before that happens. And if this is a breakaway gap and we start closing back over, I don't know, 110-ish, 110.50, uh, it's going to look like, the euro's really going to come out of here. So I'm interested in what you're seeing here and what you're thinking. Okay, now I'm watching two screens, so maybe I cannot look directly in front of my camera, but never mind. Okay, uh, first of all, I warned that uh, this could be a breakaway gap, and uh, I'm, I absolutely agree with you uh, because we have uh, common gaps. Common gaps are usually filled, right, but right. Uh, breakaway and runaway gaps usually happen after some strong news, some some strange events in forex market, in, in stock market. It's more common, but honestly, uh, I, I I knew this was a breakaway gap simply because uh, the result of uh, uh, French uh, pre-polling showed some different different result. Actually, Le Pen was in lead uh, just before the elections, and then Macron slightly got ahead. But market obviously tried to price in Le Pen's victory. And right. when this news kicked in, it was like surprise. So I don't think the gap will, will be filled uh, before uh, the second round. So okay. uh, I'm looking you at know, it. I, I, I have to commend you. Uh, you know, you're you're younger than me, most people in the business are, but for you to have a knowledge of different types of gaps, where did you learn that? Because I learned it from an old Bible, technical Bible, called Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Edwards and McGee, and that was in the 70s. So how do you know the difference between breakaway and area gaps and you probably even know what an island top and island bottom is. Yes, you know of, course, about of course I know. I, 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 if, you, if you think about the rooftop and inverted rooftop and uh, those kind of patterns like V-shaped diving board reversals, absolutely. But I learned it harder way. I learned it when I burned my account. Okay. So that is when I learned. Because I also try to trade. Uh, most of the time when I was a new trader, a rookie trader, I tried to trade every single gap that I saw. 
And then okay. actually when I when I saw that no not every single gap will be filled, I, I, I try to to read about it. And I, I don't see. remember what was the article about gaps or I read it somewhere on the internet, but I actually talked to my friend who is also a full-time trader, he is an equity full-time trader, he lives in Australia, he's a great guy, and he actually helped me understand the basic of gaps, the difference between interbank and retail market, and uh, well, basically that is, I always learned it harder way, so uh, yeah, when I started too, to trade, buddy. there was no one to teach me, so. You know, you know. someone once said to me, Nanette, and uh, you, I think you have a similar personality type to me, they would say, Dale, how many times do you have to get hit in the head with a ball peen hammer to know it hurts? Okay, so uh, you know you had someone that helped you out, and what I love about you is all the landmines that you have stepped on. Your mission is that people don't have to go through it if they listen to you. They could all they could learn from your mistakes so that they don't have to they don't have to go through that type of pain. So I, I commend you on that, but I, I'm like you. I always have to learn the hard way. Yeah, it's it's always like that, and that is what I what I like about this job. I mean, yes, I work uh, for a good and regulated big. For me, currently the best broker, and really that they're, they're very, and I'm always honest with them, and I appreciate that they actually are giving me freedom. Uh, to use the opportunity to actually tell the people the truth. So all people who listen to me know that in, in, in trading it's, it will always be losses and it will always be losing. But the big yes. time and the, the holy grail of not losing in forex market is a good money management. That is the holy grail, money yeah. management. And everything that I learned, I learned I mean 90% of that, uh, I learned from my own mistakes. And that is right. what I want to pass the knowledge to other people who are also traders. Both you and I are traders, why not tell to other people who also want to trade? It's possible to make money, but it's hard and you need to have a plan, you need to have a battle plan, you need to actually be a warrior, as you say, Dale, always yeah. be a yeah. warrior. So let's but, get back to let's get back to this Euro chart, uh, mm -hmm. right now I'm and uh, no I noticed you had some certain areas marked. Uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, U.S. and China trade war page right now. I'm not seeing the charts, but uh, waiting to see your euro chart again. Uh, can I share my screen now? Yeah, you you are sharing your screen. Oh, okay, yeah. here. Uh, okay. Is there it okay go. now? Okay. All right. So. So tell me what you're seeing. You have uh, looks like are they weekly pivots? The W is that what the W yeah. means? Okay, yeah, so. okay. Now I will I will explain now. So okay. the first thing here is this is Euro dollar four hour time frame. This is monthly Camarilla pivot. This is EMA 89. I really believe into EMA 89 simply because 89 for me is uh, even more important than 61.8. And in trading, it's 88.6 uh, Fibonacci retracement. For me, it's more important than any other number on, on chart. So the, that is the moving the moving average, the blue line is an 89 day. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. 89. Yeah, I've, never, I've never heard that anyone use that before. So that's a pearl. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I, I can explain why I use it because I already developed, I still didn't, uh, haven't uh, made any copyright on that, but the pattern is called <laughs> T89. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'm okay. not still listening, but I still know about can, <laughs> candlesticks. Okay, well, got you. Yeah, it's, it's T89. Actually, it's my proprietary pattern that is solely seen on uh, 89 EMA. I can explain later. But uh, one of the things why I use 89 is because 88.6 is a very important number in, in trading. And also, here is it's Camarilla. Uh, this Camarilla is actually made to suit by uh, trading style because uh, when I put a four-hour time frame, we can see weekly Camarilla levels like H3, yeah. H4, H5. And then we see uh, uh, pivot points like uh, supports. Uh, L3, right. L4, L5. This is ATR. This is intraday pivot points with ATR right. projection high, ATR projection low, and these right. are monthly pivot points. If wow. we zoom into one hour time frame, we will see actually only these weekly pivot points in confluence with daily. 
So now we need to watch for our time frame because we are talking about some intra-week perspective or let's say intra-month, but this is more like intra-week perspective. This is potential head and shoulders in, in progress. But uh, I don't think that we will see any gap close before I already explained it, before this low is taken out. It's very important to, let's see this uh, data window here. So this low is exactly at 1.0820. We know that 20, 50s, and 00s are natural support and resistance number. Right. So now we have a confluence here. It's weekly L4. It's also the low of this. So I, I wouldn't uh, trade this until this low is taken out. Only that. That is what I can tell about a possible gap close. But I don't know where we'll I think that market is waiting for a second round of elections that are due in six days. That is my okay. opinion. I don't okay. see any catalyst at this point for a move on euro dollar. So one of the how reasons... About, how, about a, how about a dovish or hawkish uh, statement out of the Fed this week? Uh, yeah, move possibly, they'll, yeah, possibly Fed could make the move, but you know what I say. I usually say uh, predi react, don't predict. So on yes. this occasion, I would definitely like to react. I would yeah. probably go with a sell. I already told it on my live webinar. I would go here with a sell, but only if this low is taken out. I cannot guess whether they will come with bullish or bearish statement. The best is to place an order. And once you are filled, your order is filled, just try to uh, protect it with profit uh, stop. So once it starts to move below 1,020, try to watch these levels and just move your stop loss into profits. That is the best way to trade these kind of gaps. I know okay. that many people and traders have been trapped into trading this uh, breakaway gap or yeah. we still not, don't know if it's a runaway gap. If it starts to make higher highs, then it will be definitely a runaway. But in this, in this moment, what I can tell is you can definitely try to short it below this low. Until then, really, I don't know. Maybe Fed, uh, some sort of yeah, Fed. Maybe we're, going, maybe we're going to 115, 117, 120. I mean, that would just be a normal retracement move from the move down from 140 to 104, 103. Um, how will you know, um, what would get you long this market? A long on euro dollar, you mean? Yes. What uh, would well, get you long? Uh, yeah, uh, from current perspective, uh, what I see is along the dip here, exactly around this weekly confluence. So we have 18 pivot point, we have weekly L3, so if the price drops here, I would go long. Still, it's a good risk to reward because until this low is taken out, a euro dollar does not have to do anything with bears. Also, right. uh, Dale, I need to say, people don't read data correctly. Uh, the problem is Fed, in my opinion, doesn't seem interest in GDP data because advanced GDP price index it's another measure of inflation, and that is what the Fed is interested in. So advanced right. GDP is just a GDP growth measure, but price index is an inflation measure, and Fed is only interested in inflation and deployment. And so, that's a great point because uh, when Draghi was on last week, he said it uh -huh. was tame, and then the, then the German numbers came out and it wasn't so tame, and then we made another move up towards the high, up towards that... Uh, 10970 levels. So exactly. uh, you're saying in in all countries, ignore GDP prints, pay attention to inflation prints. Yes, inflation. That is what central banks are watching. That is yeah. what Fed is interested. Fed is interested in inflation and employment. That is very very important. Also, people people simply cannot cannot understand, they, they cannot comprehend the difference between stock market and forex market. I will just go slightly, Dale, if you allow me into stock market. Uh, for all people who trade stocks, they need to watch price to earnings ratio. Price okay. to earnings ratio is the main indicator to value stocks. So it, is, it essentially means the number of years of earnings required to pay back the investment in purchasing the stock. The higher the PE, the more expensive and longer it takes to pay back the stock. So normal market valuations range around 14 to 16, but the higher the PE, the more volatile the stock will be, and during recessions, PE can even drop below 
10. So why I'm talking about this? Because of, uh, uh, because of um, correlation between equities and forex market. Okay? okay. That is yeah. important. Yen is the pair. To, uh, yen right. is the currency to watch the correlation with equities. It's not dollar, guys. It's yen. Okay? Great point. Yeah, that's the risk on the carry trade, everything. Exactly. And okay. also, why? Because Japanese can get cheap credit, so they invest overseas heavily. When it's risky, they bring back the money, creating demand for yen. It's called, it's called repatriating. And right. vice versa. When it's bullish equities, they pump their money overseas, which means they sell yen and buy foreign currency. That oh. is very okay. important. Uh, guys, if you're trading stock markets, watch price to earning ratio. If you want to watch correlation, trade yen. I personally prefer yen pairs over dollar pairs. Do you, uh, do you agree with uh, Chris Laurie that the Aussie yen is the best instrument for risk on, risk off, or do you think that euro yen is a better guide for risk on, risk off? Uh, I uh, well I, I I don't know what Chris, Chris Laurie says but uh, what you said is is uh, very very true I also learned about uh, and and uh, I actually uh, had a seminar uh, a webinar actually that was simply uh, I simply explained the correlation between yen and I said definitely Australian dollar yen for me it's Australian okay. Dollar yen. Why? Because it's in risk-on environment. Commodities prices tend to increase, and traders okay. go long. They they long Australian dollar dollar due right. to that factor. When commodities prices go up, stock markets go up, and there is demand for positive swaps on Australian dollar pairs currently, as opposed to Japanese yen. When it's risk off, usually we see the opposite occurring. As a result, Japanese yen appreciates as foreign flows from Japan are repatriated back to their local currency. And yes, so, I can agree with Chris Laurie. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of a legend. Uh, so yes, then, uh, really, so really, you know, the yen uh, to me on some of my longer term views looks like 113 in the yen to me is going to be a, an important battleground area I, for risk on, risk off. I'm wondering what you see. Uh, you think about dollar yen, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Here, okay, I, I, okay see here. This is so-called bullish SHS, or uh, shoulder head shoulder, inverted yeah. head and shoulder it's called. Uh, definitely, this is what needs to be broken. Okay. One of the reasons why I prefer Forex market is so-called, I call it historical versus now moment perspective. In Forex market, prices tend to repeat. Okay, so the moves that happen in the past tend to happen in now moment. So if right. we align uh, historical buyers and sellers with now moment buyers and sellers, we will always get the same point that the price could reject from a certain perspective. Here, this is very clear to me. This was definitely the, uh, the place when dollar yen spiked. We can call it this a zone. In now yeah. moment, this zone is here. It's around 112, uh, 20 to 30. But again, okay. if we watch a longer term perspective, we can actually place, a, uh, OK, I will do it quickly. This is a trend line. And watch where this trend line is crossing. It's called an X cross. So it's very close to your 113 level. It's actually monthly H3 level. So if okay. this level uh, is broken, this should definitely come here. And above this level, it will be all about dollar yen bull. So I can agree with you. 113 is a very, very important level. Also, we can mark the level here on our charts and if we open let's say weekly charts we can see that this is the level that bulls want to take because yeah. this is the rooftop this rooftop will be taken out then and it I will see. be another push this is v-shape reversal right something big Power. Is it's normally very powerful and oh and you know what there's a great example um, uh, you know we're looking at the euro all you have to do is go back a few uh, uh, weeks and that gap up we had in the end, look, it's not filled. Anyone who's shorting it, looking for it to be filled, uh, you know, uh, if they did it right away, they're uh, taking heat on price. 
and it still, you know, could remain unfilled for a while, for a long time. So that may also end up being a breakaway gap. Uh, which pair, Dale? Uh, the yen. It's almost Euro like the euro. Yeah, you, yeah, you see that gap where your cursor is, or maybe that's my cursor, but it gapped up from here to here. Oh, and, I don't see your screen. Wait. I need okay, to... yeah, you don't see my screen, but you see the gap that we had at the end of April? It was a huge gap. I, I don't know dollar, what. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's another. Uh, uh, would you consider that possibly a breakaway gap? Uh, this one, small one. Yeah, but further out when it was going up. I need to. I need to see it here. Let me just zoom it out. Mm. On the way up to new highs, it left a gap on your chart. Mm. I just see this one. This is yeah, the gap. that's the one I'm talking about. That's it. Oh that's yeah, I was talking. also talking about that gap. Yeah, this yeah. is a breakaway gap that can turn into runaway gap. Yeah. Okay. All right. So but there. You see. So we're getting. You know, gaps are pretty unusual in FX because they trade twenty four six. So they normally happen over a weekend. Yeah. And, it's the risk. Yeah. Only. Go ahead. That is the risk what investors simply don't want to take. That is why we see profit taking on Friday. And I and I said I will trade this gap, but only if it if it breaks below 0820. Why not? I will put a small risk because I can even place a hundred pip stop with a two percent of risk. So let's say that this gap is not closed after this low is taken out. If I put my stop loss here let's say, or if I put my stop loss here, I will always have my 2% of risk. So I, I don't really care if I will lose, if I lose 2%. But the logic is when to trade it. When right. this low is taken out, then is the time to trade it. Until then, we cannot trade it. Why would I place a, a short sell now? I don't see any potential for a short sell. The only right. thing that I see is a probable move up even below 1.10. I, I can even dare to say, we might see this uh, H4 here with 111. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> there's the a lesson. The lesson from the NAD is don't anticipate a exactly. gap being, being filled. Wait for price action to give you a reason to commit to that scenario. Exactly, because we cannot trade only because we see a gap. The gap simply exists in retail. Uh, market. If you watch into a bank market, you will see you will not see any gap because market is trading each day. There is a website I usually follow it. It's called WW. I mean, it's not any advertisement, but they they show always real rates. It's uh, xc.com, so you can see the rates over the weekend. And I was right. actually I, I I had a trade on Euro GBP. I had a long trade just just before uh, the elections. And I actually made a live uh, recording. It was 135 pips win, and I was actually following what Euro GBP did on uh, on XE.com. Because guys, you cannot open and trade your platform if you trade with retail, retail brokers, right? On 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 um, <clears throat> Friday or uh, sorry, on on yeah. Saturday until, or Sunday. Yeah, until Sunday night. Exactly. So okay. you you actually need to you know you, you need to be ready for that kind of risk. But in this occasion, what I would do, I, would, I wouldn't go with, with pending order, strictly with market order. Because if it gaps down on some surprise news over the weekend, it will not open here where I placed my entry, but it will open where, where the gap actually is. So yeah, sometimes, that is why I, hmm? yeah, sometimes limit orders limit success. I say, you know, uh, so many people, especially when they're coming out, come out at a limit. If it's uh, your entry or exits within five or ten pips and you're uh, in front of your platform, who needs the anxiety of being unable uh, and not getting filled? Go, go to the market <clears throat> is a philosophy of mine. I have a couple of questions for you from the community. Mm -hmm. Robert is asking, where can we get the same pivot setup for MT4 that you have? 
Yeah, this is actually a custom-made indicator, and okay. currently, uh, Elite Currency, we are actually making it available uh, okay. for all traders. So it, it's still in phase of coding. Uh, it's like 90, 95% of it has been coded. So uh, you guys can just email me. So when it when it comes uh, with a final, or let's say when we when we publish a final version of it, when it's completely coded, then I can send it to you. So you just send an email to tarantulafx at gmail.com. I will send you this once it's completed, but before I also have a great Camarilla indicator that is slightly different because you need to change levels manually. I, I can show it here. Okay. Uh, let me just remove this one and I will put that one. So guys, this is free for all. So you just email me and definitely you can have it. Let okay. me just find it. Uh, yeah, I will. All right, I, I have a, I have another question. Do you have a view on the bond markets in the U.S. and perhaps the Bund? Because no. a lot of people, a lot of people trade euro based upon the two-year uh, U.S. bond, and I don't know what they do for. Uh, uh, they use you know interest rate uh, bond market vehicles for the interest rate differential. I was wondering. Someone's asking. A reef is asking. If uh, no, Luca, because Luca is a, a bond bear. Do you have a view on uh, the U.S. bond market or EU bond market? No, uh, basically I don't watch uh, euro dollar and bond market in any correlation. Okay. I only watch bond market with with Fed hike and treasuries, and I usually look at 12 month treasuries because it's the equivalent of the Fed cash rate due, uh, due to its low risk investment being a government bond. Okay, so 12 month is like a one year T bill. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Another that is question. What I watch. Okay, but not for question, Another question is uh, Arif Hussein wants to know if you have a view on gold. Gold. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, but traders usually uh, ask me about gold, and uh, this is it. Uh, this is the goal. We can say basically that this uh, retail gap uh, has been closed. I mean, it's like two, three pips shy. Pro, but this is the zone. This is that zone. I call it low volatility zone. Because at this zone, at the last, uh, at the last price section, it showed uh, it, it was not high volatility. So this zone is very, very crucial. What I would say is, if we zoom out, let's say we are talking now from intraday, intraweek perspective, because we are using four-hour chart. Don't forget, guys, when you ask me about gold view, you need to be also more specific. Uh, uh, every time frame has its yeah, own. Yes, so again. And how about against a different currency? Gold against U.S. dollar. Gold against yen. Gold against euro. Yes, and also. It's, it's about time frames because guys every time frame has its own trend so if you if you're want if you want to piggyback momentum from uh, let's say from higher time frame trends then you need to watch let's say for intraday I watch four hour one hour and occasionally yeah. I can switch also to m30 if I trade wolf waves I prefer m30 but the thing is here uh, this is uh, in uptrend. This is order yeah. block, okay? Now I will be fast with this. Order block by its basic definition is bullish or bearish. Bullish order block uh, is a high uh, of a bearish candle prior to move up. Uh, I personally say it's not uh, about bullish or bearish candle, it's about the week. Week is more important than body. So this is uh, order block. This is strictly bullish order block. It has a confluence with L3 ATR pivot point. We can also right. place a trend line here. So I think this market could jump easily. Okay. What a so great interview. What a great interview, buddy. I, I, <laughs> you know, it was so great hearing your voice and your command of what's going on in the markets and your conviction. And um, if you would give your uh, email address again, uh, uh, maybe uh, Steve, if you're listening, you could type it out for everyone that's interested in yes. uh, getting the pivot points from Naned. And uh, I encourage everyone to follow Naned at Tarantula FX on Twitter and uh, at Elite Currencies with him and his partner Chris Sporchek. And Chris is a great Elliotician. And I want to thank you so much, my brother, for coming on and spending time in the FACE community and supporting my new effort to edify traders every day. 
Yeah, and thank you, Dale. All, it's always great opportunity, and it's always great honor for me to chat with you and other traders. And guys, wherever you live, wherever you may be, uh, have in mind that I will, as long as I have the power to, I will support you always, and I will always try to help you. What is really, really in your, in your best interest is to follow Dale. Uh, try to follow me because I will be always honest with you. I don't hide my losses. I don't talk just about wins. Uh, we can lose, we can actually win, but the most important things, as long as we know what to do, as long as, as we apply money management, proper money management, we should be safe. So there you go, everyone. That's Nanette Kertes, my trading warrior brother with a giving spirit. And you don't find a lot of that. Our, our industry is filled with barracudas and sharks. Yeah. And there's a, there's a guy that's going to help you. Uh, uh, so you want to say your email again one more time, Nanette, before we say yes. goodbye? I already wrote it down. It's tarantulafx at gmail.com. Okay. And uh, that is my email. And just for this pivot point indicator, you can guys have it, uh, this previous version. So just email me, and I can send it to you. It's, of course, free. So just try to uh, watch my previous recordings about Camarilla and so on and try to see how I trade my analysis so you will understand a little bit more what is going on by using Camarilla indicator. And thanks again, Dale. Uh, well, let's not let a year pass, buddy. Now that, uh, you know, I feel pretty comfortable and uh, happy about this new association with Blake and the rest of the team. I'm going to be here. Uh, for I'm going to be here for maybe uh, I'm hoping it's my last stop. You know I'm kind of like a journeyman baseball player. I go from team to team. You know. Yeah, and, but you're uh, a living legend, Dale. Uh, and uh, I hope that we can uh, do this more frequently. You know, every other month or something like that, I could bring you back. And you're you made it easy for me. You're a great guest, man. Yes, you, yes, I'm up for that, and I will always help you out. Just call me, and I will be there. No problems at all. All right, good hunting, bro. Doing? I hope I hope that the pips rain down on you and everyone that you're assisting and paying forward. Thank you, brother. Yes, and 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 to you today, and just before I quit, one more thing that I will never forget, and you actually said it correct. When uh, people ask us, uh, "Can I live with trading ten thousand huh. dollars?" What yeah. we say, you can live. We need an underpass. <laughs> 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 the things that people remember I say yes you can trade for a, you can trade for a living with 10 grand if your address is under a freeway underpass yeah. so all right very true yeah <laughs> uh, great to end it on with a laugh brother take it easy yeah. Ned. and thank you thank you Dale once more and uh, see you soon okay bro thank Cheers, you here's my brother brother adios adios so everyone that's a wrap for me I hope everyone enjoyed Nanette. Uh, I think he's uh, top shelf. It's great to talk to my friends and contemporaries. I'm in uh, outside of San Diego, LaShawn, in a town called Temecula. It's wine country in Southern California. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm right near Old Town, LaShawn. You're very welcome, Arif. I want to thank my team as well. I want to thank Steve Volge and Stelios for another great, another great uh, session. And uh, I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. You're very welcome, Hardianto. Adios, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your spring weather. Remember, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. And you know, money comes and goes. Time is gone forever. Make it count. Thanks for sharing some of your time with us today. Adios, everyone.